Alrighty guys, in today's video we're going to be looking at exporting our custom channels that we've made in Photoshop so that FlexiPrint can actually understand it. But before that, let's have a quick intro first. So today's video can be found on softwaretraining.co.za. We make short and easy to watch problem solving videos and we also have daily updates. Otherwise, we're back into the tutorial here. So in Photoshop, if you guys remember from the previous video, we created some custom varnish and white channels. Made sure we named them to white and varnish. And now we're going to be exporting this. So now the normal PNG file format will unfortunately not work as even though it can save channels, it has difficulty with custom channels. So in order to do that, I'm going to just export this. So I'm going to go file i think you can go ex uh, save as this is the right option some programs it's export but i'm for sure remember you go file save as and then from the drop down menu of file formats what we want to do is locate the tiff file format it's right here at the bottom tif or tiff select that and then from the settings i'm going to make sure off what channels is on layers you don't need to but i'm just going to leave everything as it is on default then I'm going to name this um, uh, Grammy PNG W and V for uh, white and varnish. Click save. It's going to ask us some options. I'm going to leave everything at default. Just say OK. Then this wants to tell us because I included all the layers, it's going to be bigger than usual, but that's fine. Now, if I go back to our folder, you will see we've got our actual. Um, PNG here. If I open it, it's uh, okay. This previews it well, but the thumbnail you can see it looks a bit strange, but it should be fine in the program itself. So we're going to just put that to the test. But now, before I drag it in, I saw in the previous videos when we set up the printers, I put both that supported um, varnish. So I've gone and added another printer, one without varnish. To do that, simply go setup, add setup. And then the printer we're looking for is the normal. I'll just zoom in here so you guys can see a bit better. It's the DTF printer XP without the UV. So that one won't have the varnish channel because you might have a printer without varnish. So then the process will differ slightly. But the default settings is pretty much the same. The main thing is under, my apologies, we go here to actual default job properties under the our actual, uh, what do you call it, printer options. The, so the ink types where you normally have a white and a varnish, you'll only have a white, and then here it will be under solid. That is only ch change we'll be making will be that. But now back to the other uh, printer, I'm just gonna go quickly drag and drop our new file into it. Got it here, go dry click properties, and then I'm just gonna fit this here to the center. So we've got our actual one. We can see there's a block, which means the other one should be there. So now if we go on the preview, and I say preview output channels, wait for it to load. Then if we go to white, you will currently see we've got a white and we've got white under the varnish. And if we go to varnish, okay, we don't have the white, but what we're looking for. So we want the white to only affect what we made the custom channel to. So in order to do that, what we want to do is have this program or this graphics read the channels correctly. So where we before set the actual um, white options and varnish options under the actual printer options to uh, under solid and un uh, under solid for both, we want to change this now to spot color. Now to better understand this spot color in many ways is their way of saying channel colors. So this program sees it as spot, but um, Photoshop will see it as channels. So we want to select both of these, set them to spot color. So if you know you're going to be working with uh, a lot of custom channels, then you can set this in your default to spot colors. But I recommend normally leave that under solid. But now we're going to be setting this to spot color. Then if we go back to our preview, wait for the white to load. You should notice that the white is not only on the custom channels we made, which is very convenient. 
So that means you can exclude white from certain areas if you wanted to, or include white. So if I wanted to, I could maybe put it like a white border around this URL or something on that line to simplify things. So now the most important thing, like I mentioned, is the file format. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your actual, when you export it, you export it as a TIFF file so that it can import right. And then next thing is you want to make sure you set it from under solid to spot color and then everything should be correct. But yeah, otherwise that is it on creating some custom channels in Photoshop. And we're also going to be looking at some bleeds that is very handy and some finalizing. But until then, if we head here to softwaretraining.co.za, you guys will notice we've got a variety of different softwares we do cover. And you can also isolate your search on the top right. If you do not, however, find the training videos you're looking for, just simply go here, request the training video, fill in the mini form, and then we'll do our best to try and make that for you. But otherwise, thanks guys for watching and cheers.